from Idaho, and uh, I'm joined here by Senator Joe Lieberman and Tom Pirelli, and we appreciate. Um, and S Senator Sheldon Whitehouse is going to be with us. In fact, we think that he's going to make it, but um, we are going to go ahead anyway. And, and if he doesn't make it, then I'm sure that uh, he'll give you an opportunity to share with him your thoughts uh, as soon as he can. Uh, public awareness of teen dating violence and its effect on victims of crime has dramatically increased in the past year. Now more than ever, teens have a greater awareness of this issue. Just in Washington, D.C., teens seeking supportive services over the past year have increased threefold. The Centers for Disease Control, oh, Sheldon, come on up here. I just told them we might miss you, but I'm glad no, you're no, able no, to glad get to in. Be here. Thanks, we got to get one of you guys over on this other side. <clears throat> the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other experts indicate that, a teen, that teen dating violence is a serious public health issue for today's youth. One in ten high school students self-reported on a CDC survey that they were purposefully hit, slapped, or physically hurt by a boyfriend or girlfriend in the past year. Physic a physically or sexually abused teen is up to six times more likely to become pregnant and more than two times more likely to report a sexually transmitted disease. Such abuse victims also suffer for, from academic underachievement, as one in five of the girls who were victims did not attend school on more than one occasion in a 30-day period because she felt unsafe at school. Many parents are still unaware of the extent of these issues, including the growing harmful impact of abuse in the electronic media, such as suggestive texts and Internet threats. Since 2004, Congress has passed resolutions designating the first week in February as National Teen Violence Awareness and Prevention Week. This campaign began by a group of teenagers who took a stand against teen dating violence. Since this initial campaign, Congress, over 50 state and local and national organizations, recognize this effort every year. In recognition of the growing awareness of this issue and its ramifications, Senate Resolution 373 highlights teen dating violence throughout the month of February. This resolution encourages teens to develop healthier relationships and calls for parents, schools, and community members to observe the month with programs and activities that provide education on teen dating violence and prevention within their communities. Our teens today will be parents tomorrow. It's our responsibility to help them understand what constitutes healthy relationships. It is said that family violence is a cycle. They, these children end up living or learning what they live. Let's work together to stop the cycle of interpersonal violence today before destructive attitudes and behavior engulf yet another generation of Americans. And with that, I would like to turn the time now over to Senator Joe Lieberman for his statement. Uh, thanks very much, Mike. I'm honored to be here with you and uh, Sheldon Whitehouse and, and Tom Pirelli. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, what you had to say, and I think you got it just right. I, I want to put it in, a, in the context of this um, uh, year marking the 15th anniversary also of the Violence Against Women Act, which uh, uh, is a landmark piece of legislation that really has paved the way for tremendous strides in curbing domestic violence in our country and uh, also s inspired uh, similar movements in uh, other countries around the world. Uh, despite uh, the continuation of the problem, the, the fact is that we have made a significant progress in transforming our society's understanding that domestic violence is not just a private matter insofar as it's in the family or a private matter insofar as it's embarrassing. It is a crime and it is a serious crime and should be treated as such by uh, our law enforcement uh, uh, system uh, and be seen as such by the victims of it and those who witness uh, them being victims. Uh, this resolution, in a way, expresses that same uh, attitude toward uh, teen violence. I'm, I'm really proud that uh, every year the resolution has been introduced since 2006. It has been uh, unanimously passed by the Senate, 
and uh, that happened again uh, earlier this week. And, it, and as we did earlier with, with violence against women generally, uh, the resolution puts a spotlight on a, on a terrible problem and attempts to empower uh, younger people in our country to take a stand and to develop against this problem and to develop uh, safe and healthy relations. And Mike is right. Uh, it has to start early um, so that uh, the, the victims are empowered not to accept this uh, so that, in, that they won't really become in an awful way accustomed uh, to accepting it. Uh, and, and we hope that by passing this resolution that we encourage uh, people simply not to not to tolerate uh, this kind of violence. I might describe what, what uh, usually happens during this month. It's all about raising uh, awareness uh, and um, encouraging uh, young people uh, to, um, to to say stop. I won't accept it anymore. Uh, this is unacceptable, even criminal behavior. Uh, and uh, uh, it's wrong. Uh, and, and if necessary, I'll report it to the police. As a matter of fact, I will report it to the police. Bottom line, I'm proud to be here with my colleagues, proud to be part of the United States Senate taking our stand uh, to address this urgent problem. And I thank all of you for being here today, a lot of whom I know are advocates and workers in this area. You make a tremendous difference uh, in, in, the, in the lives of individuals and in the life of our society, and I thank you for it. I'm proud now to introduce uh, my colleague, very junior. Very junior. <laughs> does that make you very senior? <laughs> it does, unfortunately. <laughs> Sheldon Whitehouse. Thank you, Joe. Out. Well, I want to start by thanking Senator Crapo for his leadership on this issue and for organizing the press conference today, and to commend the Department of Justice for their great work in this area and to recognize you and all of the men and women across the country who are working so hard to raise awareness uh, on this issue. Uh, teen dating violence is something that every parent hopes will never hit home. But uh, for two Rhode Island parents um, who came here last year, uh, it hit home all too hard. They experienced the worst news that a parent can experience, which is uh, the death of their child. They were told that their daughter Lindsay had been murdered and they discovered that it was by her abusive ex-boyfriend. Frankly, I don't know how one recovers from that, but Anne and Chris found their way through their pain and through their grief to uh, the power to act to solve this problem. And um, they have worked hard on education, uh, going out to schools, encouraging young people to be open about this abuse. This is clearly a silent epidemic. The awareness factor of what we are doing today, I think, is extremely valuable. And the people who this affects, predominantly girls 16 to 24 um, are at a stage in their life where they do not have a great amount of life experience and they certainly don't necessarily have the life experience to know that a controlling and a violent relationship is far from normal and to get the word out that this is wrong to get the word out that one needs to be candid and open and disclosing and transparent about it and to get the word out that there are resources that can help before things get out of hand is very important. Back in Rhode Island, because of Ann and Chris Burke's courageous work, uh, the Rhode Island General Assembly passed the Lindsay Ann Burke Act, which requires all school districts in the state to have a policy to address dating violence in schools and to teach students in grades 7 through 12 about preventing uh, dating violence. This has become a model program for other states. This has been an issue that uh, I worked on as Attorney General. Um, circulating a movie about clean, about dating violence through all the schools. Um, the Burks have also started the Lindsay Ann Burke Memorial Fund to help pay for school training so that even more students can learn about the dangers of dating violence. It is uh, humbling to me to think about two people suffering that loss who have made such profound contributions, but it puts, I think, into very clear perspective how important the work is 
that you do each and every day to prevent the next Lindsay Ann Burke murder from happening. So I thank you, and I commend Senator Crapo, and I'm so delighted to see the Assistant Attorney General here as well. Huh? Good afternoon. My name is Tom Pirelli, and I'm the Associate Attorney General and the third ranking official at the Department of Justice. Uh, my responsibilities include overseeing a number of areas, but including the, the uh, components that uh, work with state and local law enforcement in a host of areas, but particularly in the area of office, uh, the, uh, the Office of Violence Against Women. I, I, I see in the audience, and I want to particularly uh, recognize, as Senator Lieberman did, uh, the tremendous work of the advocates in the field, and in particular the folks at the Office of Violence Against Women who do just such extraordinary work in this and a host of other areas, so thank you. Um, I'm honored to stand here with Senator Crapo, Senator Whitehouse and Senator Lieberman to shine a spotlight on this issue. Um, for the first time this month, when, uh, February, uh, next month will be commemorated National Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month, not just a week. Uh, that wasn't a small feat and I commend and appreciate the Senate for acting uh, in a unanimous passage this week. Uh, teen dating violence is being given the, the prominence and the parity uh, it needs uh, as we look at issues such as domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, all of which have been uh, uh, noted uh, through an awareness month, and this is the first time that that will be true for teen dating violence. Uh, and we at the Department of Justice intend to use that month to raise awareness and to work with local communities on education to protect young people uh, and to help them work through the, the challenging and difficult problems that they face. Now this comes in the context, again, as Senator Lieberman mentioned, of the 15th anniversary of the Violence Against Women Act, uh, which is a year that we at the Department of Justice intend to use as a call to action, uh, not just commemorating what has been done in the past, but to renew our commitment to ending violence against women in all of its form. Uh, our government uh, sort of funds programs, uh, uh, pr uh, works with law enforcement at the state and local level and prosecutes crime, but we also have a responsibility to speak out on these issues. And we've committed ourselves to thinking outside the box, uh, not using just the same old techniques and tactics to address this problem, uh, but to look at what we've been doing right and what we've been doing wrong. Uh, one of the things that particularly teen dating violence tells us and focus, should focus us on is that we need to continue to work with the state and local partners and tribal partners that we have been working with for decades. Uh, but most importantly, we need to be working with kids. Uh, because they have tremendous ideas from uh, starting Teen Dating Violence Week uh, to many of the best ideas in the field here. So we really look forward to working with them as we go forward. Um, we know that violence against women is the seed of so many other kinds of violence and so many other problems uh, that children and family face. Teen dating violence affects our most vulnerable people, our young children, many of whom don't know how to identify, prevent, or report it. And we know that if they're the subject of violence or they're exposed to violence, their chances of thriving at home and in school are reduced. Uh, recently, the Attorney General and the Secretary of Education held a forum uh, with students uh, from around the country about promoting healthy relationships. And I wish everyone could have been there because these students were so impressive. Uh, one of them, uh, actually a young woman from Providence, Rhode Island, who uh, I'm pretty sure is going to be asking for a job in your office, Senator Whitehouse, any day. Uh, and you recommendation. I think she's got a good shot. You should hire her. Um, but, you know, she was asked by the Secretary of Education, why should this be a top priority, given all the other things that the, the problems and issues that the United States faces? Uh, and what she said was, you know, uh, you guys, in reference to two cabinet heads, uh, you guys would be amazed at how much stuff this stuff is intertwined and added that kids can't do well in school when their outside lives are unhealthy, work on the social and emotional parts of a child's life, she said, and then academic success will follow. Um, she told us, as I think all the students did, that we have to do better, and that involves working with all of the partners, including kids, and that's something that we at the Department of Justice are very focused on this year and in the coming years. Um, because we share a vision where men, women, boys, girls, and communities can live together in a world without fear of violence. Today, thanks to the Senate, we take another important step forward uh, in that effort to raise the profile of teen dating violence and hopefully uh, reduce and end it. Um, thank you very much to, to everyone here, but particularly to the members of the Senate who've been uh, so critical to this effort. Thank you. I'd like to, before we take a few questions, I'd like to also join with uh, my colleagues and thank them for their support and work on this issue. But join with them in thanking you for the work that you do 
And you know, to extend, take this opportunity to extend our thanks to the, the young girls and boys around this country who are speaking out and who really are leading in this effort to try to make sure that we address this critical issue. Uh, these young people need to know that when they get into these unhealthy relationships, such as uh, Senator Whitehouse described with the, with the sp specific example and uh, Senator Lieberman described in terms of their impacts, they need to know that these are not normal relationships and they need to know that there is help available. And their parents need to know to, to look for the signs and how to counsel and to work with them and to help them uh, make the choices that will help restore strength into their life and to help build their emotional and uh, social strengths to be able to be strong in their academic achievement. 